recently told me that money making basically boils down to pattern recognition now your pattern recognition can be improved based on your education or your experiences or everything you do in your career from a practical perspective but check out this cv iit i am working at a top job post iit and i am in a hedge fund then coming back trying a bunch of businesses and then finally getting into the world of blockchain and blockchain based gaming a very interesting episode for all you young entrepreneurs all you aspiring young entrepreneurs all you young professionals who are always looking for the next money making opportunity trust me this episode will blow your mind away it was so heavy we had to divide it into two parts this is anshul rustagi the founder of totality corp the founder of something called the zionverse what it is how is it related to blockchain all of it will be covered in these two very special episodes genuinely saying this in the entire 250 or so episodes we've created till now this one is amongst the top 3 when it comes to heaviness and total data packed inside an episode both these conversations together this is part 1 we'll be highlighting upcoming industries like the cannabis industry the hemp industry the opportunities available in blockchain the opportunities available in business generally all that's going to be packed inside this episode of the renvi show make sure you follow trs on spotify we're a spotify exclusive now which means that every episode is available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world get ready to make some notes get ready to return to this episode even after you're done listening to it this is anshul rustagi go follow him on all his platforms because you're going to want more of him after these two episodes Welcome to a two part conversation on the Ranveer show this is going to be heavy this is going to be <laughs> very educative uh if you're interested in the world of crypto nfts weed gaming uh the future of the human race the future of how you can make money the future of your own skill set listen to anshul rustagi thank you for being here brother thank you for having me ranveer it's an honor i'm really excited to the looking forward to the conversation i am excited to be talking to someone who's got your on paper brain firstly right iit i am hedge fund businesses and now web3 nfts this whole world of meta the metaverse like you've gone on some journey but you know we'll talk more about the metaverse and web3 in part 2 part 1 is more focused on the learnings because i feel that before any big business journey begins any legacy begins there's always a training phase or learning phase right so we're going to talk about weed we're going to talk about gaming we're going to talk about what kids now college kids especially need to learn about because your colleges your online courses also may not be able to teach you what another human being can correct in terms of experience correct so let's start with part 1 let's do it you know while i have so many questions about the hemp industry the future of the cannabis industry the future of gaming the future of blockchain crypto nfts uh, i will begin with your time at iit man you went from iit to iim to working in one of the biggest hedge funds in the world this is like a dream career path for so many indians right and now you've switched up into this alternative entrepreneurship i don't just call it entrepreneurship i call it alternative entrepreneurship right because you're building for the future you're yeah. basically doing what a lot of american techies did in the 80s in mm-hmm. order to build for the 90s my understanding of what you're doing is that you're building for the 2030s and 40s yeah beginning from the 20s but let's go back to the 2000s where you were in iit what was that like how did that set you up for your future do you think iit and iim has set you up for your life um i think brand name definitely helps uh, mm. coming from a culture like so my father is from iit delhi oh, wow. my first cousin is from iit kanpur he was actually an inspiration for me to really compete and do better with him so my entire time when i was competing in je uh, my only goal was to get a better uh, air rank than what my first cousin did which mm. i was able to and i've just been a very competitive person <laughs> sort of all my life mm. um so iit was more about clearing the competition then it was about sort of a career mm. I, i have to be honest um i am was again in flow right so you, when you come out of iit 
there are really three paths. You either, uh, you know, take your GRE, go outside. I really didn't want to do that at that point of time. You go to an IM, change sort of your career, or you uh, get a job, right? So I chose the IM path. I was fortunate to get through IM. And then from there, went to London in the finance industry, uh, working with stock investments, where we were the seventh largest hedge fund in the world at that point. Wow. Um, so yeah, IIT, you know, was great. Um, it's very different from what people sort of, I think, imagine the IIT to be. Why? Why do you say that? Uh, I think getting into IIT is much tougher. Once you are inside it, um, I think maybe it's a little bit of, you know, the the hurdle to get in is so mm. high that when you get in, the expectations are risen to an extent where when you get in, you're like, hmm, this <laughs> wasn't really what I thought, right? Like, I, I'll, I'll honestly say, like the first day I went, I thought, oh my God, you know, the best brains, mm. I'm so fortunate. We're probably going to break down Einstein's theory and we'll have <laughs> our own theory of relativity. And I see like some people sleeping, the <laughs> other professor saying, you know, mug up the same thing. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> what is going on here, right? So great college experience, made a lot of friends uh, there. You know, IIT has, uh, I, particularly IIT Delhi, I feel has a great network. Mm. Uh, but yeah, very different from what I expected when an 18 year old walked inside uh, an IIT, mm. but definitely the brand helps, right? The brand helps, the network helps. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about sort of what you do with it mm. um, rather than just the branding. Are you a gamer also? Have you been a gamer? Yeah. So my spectacles are all thanks to my chacha who got me an Atari when I was <laughs> five, I think. Um, mm. And that's how my gaming journey began. So mm. I used to like lie on the couch on reverse and start playing <laughs> games. Uh, there was like joust and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so being a gamer ever since. This is what I've observed about gamers that uh, a lot of gaming makes you a sort of competitive person. And maybe that competition True. landed yeah. up in JE and that's how you probably ace JE. Yeah, also. no. So so I think gaming does two things. I always advise, like when parents come and say, hey, can you tell our kid some advice? I'm like, let them game, let them do whatever they want. Because you are absolutely right. The mm. two things gaming helped me with is A, really figuring out that there is a design to everything, mm. right? So when you have a design, you really figure out what's the way to progress in mm. that design. And the other thing was never giving up. Mm. So like in gaming, luckily, unlike maybe life, you can make a lot of mistakes and you keep going back. Mm. So I think the perseverance, which all engineers eventually get, mm. I think I got from gaming. Yeah, yeah. And engineers get from the many attempts we give for yeah. all entrance tests or all exams we need to write. Yeah. You know, uh, early on, like maybe a couple of years ago, I used to have this serious thing against gaming addiction only because I went through gaming addiction myself. Right. I have something called an addictive personality. You're right. married to a psychologist, so you would have heard of <laughs> yeah. these things. And right. apparently, apparently I do. Right. Uh, so I've, I've had my own share of addictions, man. I've gone through like some serious right. uh, lineup of addictions in my past. I'm right. a teetotaler now. Right. Uh, I consciously try not to game because I know the uh, sinkhole that I put my own mind through when I Got game. Got it. Yeah. But I'm all for the positive side of gaming, which is what you mentioned. Yeah. But I do feel it builds up your mind in certain ways. It does have a certain meditative aspect to it in terms of the level of focus you're supposed to give yep. when you're playing a first person shooter with your own clan yep. of friends. You're entirely in that world. So I completely hear you, man. Yeah. So like I'll add to that Ranveer and say, you know, that there is a state of flow. So mm. I'm sure like when you are in your work zone, you are in a state of flow. And I think gaming like meditation is a great way to achieve that. But it's a tougher way, I think, to to absorb meditation, right? Gaming probably makes it very easy mm. for you to experience that state of flow. Mm. So when you have a lot of gamers, uh, yes, I know some aspects of anything which is done too much yeah. is not good, yeah. right? So same with gaming. But gaming can really get you to that feeling that what is flow? Mm. Right? And if I play a game straight for 10 hours and I'm in that flow, the great part would be for people to learn that and be able to replicate it in other areas of their life 100%. that they actually want to do. Flow is where your career is built. Flow is where your money for the future is made. Correct. And this is something that's been a. This is something that's not taught in college. Absolutely. Who talks not. about flow in college? Yeah, no one does, right? Unfortunately, we are still very theoretical in mm. college, right? Which is what I was saying. Like my IIT point was that you know I really thought that we are going to challenge a lot of stuff within IIT itself, but the education system and the real life, I still think there is a disconnect of maybe twenty years. Mm. So I think what we are being taught today was probably relevant 20 years ago, in yeah. my opinion. And we aren't really taught about EQ and how to manage sort of different uh, aspects of your real life, uh, you know, more away from the theory. The theory mm. is important, but there have to be these concepts of flow or how do you manage decision making. 
in real life which really doesn't happen mm. in particularly in engineering mm. you know um just want to highlight this concept of flow especially for people who don't know about it i first heard about it in the domains of creative professions mm-hmm. so say you're a writer or you're an artist or you're an editor mm-hmm. sometimes if you're enjoying an editor a lot you enter a state of flow right. but the ticket to be able to enter that state of flow is actually having a skill set that allows you to sort of mechanically go about a process right therefore you're able to see the future maybe 3 seconds earlier than it occurs yep for example if you're editing a video you know what you're going to put in the next 3 seconds of the video it mm-hmm. appears in your mind first mm-hmm. because your skill set is capable of matching up to creating those next 3 seconds correct you create those next 3 seconds and then you create the next 3 seconds and you create the next 3 seconds right. that's an elaborate edit of say 10 minutes gets made right. or an elaborate painting gets made yep. because you see the future in your head slightly before it happens which is exactly what happens in gaming correct when a guy comes in front of you in a first person shooter your first hunch is okay my thumb now has to go to the other button where i have to hit right. um, that guy in the head right it's sort of this little exercise of flow that happens in that world of gaming what they don't teach you in college is that the best professionals it could be sports it could be business people it could be artists it could be actors this state of flow is very very key to their careers and it's something you should train for in college so if you're enjoying any activity and if you feel like you're finding a state of flow in that right um try figuring how to monetize that activity correct try practicing it in college go correct. out in the real world yep. and then create a business out of it create a job out of it yeah so i think like what you're exactly saying is see what gaming has done really well because of the game design mm. is that the progression is very important so what ends up happening in college is that there is an absolute level of difficulty mm. right and that difficulty doesn't change and it is not dependent on my skill mm. whereas in gaming if you and i game and you are at a better level your difficulty level will be higher mm. so you can also enter a state of flow and if my difficulty level is lower to start with i can start with that level of flow and as i gain competence it will increase my level mm. of difficulty whereas in college what happens is for you and i irrespective of our competence is the same and it's the absolute level mm. so some people who are very skilled they find it boring mm. some for whom it's very difficult they also get disconnected because they're like it's impossible to achieve mm. and only very small fraction can get it mm. right and so you have really connected very well flow with ikka guy mm. and if you love that flow find that you know you get that passion you find that competence also uh, figure out that can it make money for you and then mm. you're sitting in your sort of ikka guy and mission which i think like i have found in this entrepreneurial yeah. journey yeah. it it's such an important moment in life for every young professional correct you have to find that moment of flow because it will keep you entertained through your career exactly and if you want to kill it in any career you're going to have to work like a crazy person correct and the only way you will be able to hit that high level of hard work that high quantity of hard work is if you're finding a state of flow and you're tricking your brain into thinking that it's not actually working that's correct. what flow also does for you Absolutely. you don't feel like it's a job you feel yep. like oh i'm just creating the future that i'm seeing in my head before it happens in the present yeah yeah absolutely i think if you don't enjoy the journey in whatever you are doing only the outcome mm. can only keep you motivated for a very short term right whether that's money whether that's getting some social status once you achieve it then what's next mm. right so i always term this as micro happiness mm. so when i used to trade i always used to feel like there's a term called like short convexity and i i call it micro happiness if i made money in a trade i would always be like damn i should have done more <laughs> right if i lost money then i'm always kicking myself like shit i shouldn't have done it mm. right but like when you love the journey you are like you know the money i made or lost is just a game mm. actually the reason i love finance is it was almost uh, like a game to me right it's a game with real stakes but it is still a game right at the end the money is the score in it rather than actually meaning if you start attaching things to it in real life then you would probably sort of never do anything right mm. like suddenly like i was managing 3 and 1/2 billion and if suddenly i feel like oh i'm making a half a billion dollar trade and i'm like whoa what does half a billion mean in real world mm. then i would be paralyzed to take any action right mm. have i done my analysis do i feel confident have i done the risk management yes then let's do it mm. right and what happens in profit and loss take it unemotionally either get out of it if it's losing money or keep building it if it's making money yeah. right so there has to be that disconnect of that game design 100%. inside to actually and that's true for every career yeah. right so like even for you i'm sure if you suddenly start feeling like oh my god will this be millions and billions of users or not then you will also start taking the decisions accordingly right which will probably lead down not to the optimum mm. path you know grant cardone so he's a he's a big uh, sales coach from us we had him on the show 
Okay. And I didn't have him for too much time. He okay. didn't give us that much time. And right. I had I had three four key questions that I asked him. Right. So he has uh, been become. So he's uh, gone through the journey of being a bootstrap millionaire. Uh huh. And I believe he's bootstrapped his way to becoming a billionaire also. Oh wow. Yeah. So okay. uh, I asked him, "What's the uh, journey like from being a millionaire to becoming a billionaire?" He said that this is the most important business lesson you'll ever get, which is that. you have a certain set of business lessons in order to get to becoming a millionaire but all those business lessons change up a little bit if you want to become a billionaire which means that you have to change your perception of money right and the money you've made now you need to look at it as potential right i call it looking at it as petrol which basically echoes the same thing that you're saying you can't look at money for its own value correct you have to look at it as tokens yes right absolutely what you yeah. you said something like similar you said that uh, you can't look at half a billion dollars as its real world value yeah yeah after a certain point business correct, and correct. another life lesson they don't teach you in college yeah, because yeah. they teach you to look at money as money correct that oh 10000 rupees will get you this expensive thing exactly 500 rupees will get you a burger correct. whatever correct. no one says that 5 lakh rupees can create 50 lakh rupees for you if you use it well exactly yeah mm-hmm. you're absolutely right so you know which is why if you see in gaming and i always like i i play a lot of poker and the reason they give you chips even though the chips have 1 dollar chip is 1 dollar it's written 1 dollar and it will have that exchange value but the reason to give you chips is actually to remove that abstraction mm. right like even if you're sitting with a million dollar of chips mm. you feel like it's chips right so you're playing with it you're making all sort of stacks and towers and now it's sort of become a game right yeah. if suddenly people put a million dollars of cash in front of you again you are like <laughs> oh my god right like am i really going to bet a million dollars in in this hand So, mm. by the way, crypto does the same thing, right? Mm. Suddenly you have mm. Ethereum, Bitcoin. You're like, hmm, it's not really one Bitcoin. Isn't really now worth sixty eight thousand dollars. It mm. is a Bitcoin, mm. right? What do I do with it to make it productive? Which I think is a good abstraction as well. Yeah, yeah. So many questions about crypto, NFTs, and blockchain right. for you. Uh, you know, but before we head into that section of the podcast, I'd actually quickly like to highlight two things. Mm-hmm. One, why did you leave that job of being at the hedge fund? also explain what a hedge fund is for sure. for listeners who don't know what it is and secondly i think you went into a risky business right after uh, the hedge fund phase of your life so these two questions for you explain sure. the hedge fund explain what a hedge fund is yeah. and then explain uh, the business you tried after the hedge fund correct so the best way to explain hedge funds is it's a you collect a pool of money from institutional sophisticated investors rich people really rich people mm. um and institutions as well like your pension funds etc and really i would the simplest way i can explain mm. the hedge fund business is in the financial markets everyone is driving a road roller but because they're driving a road roller which is big they leave pennies there and a hedge fund is really the vacuum cleaner that goes and takes away the penny what does that mean um like say the market is in in bull market right now everybody would be buying nasdaq because that's the easiest way but while buying nasdaq they will leave an opportunity to do say sell nasdaq future and buy the underlying stocks as simple as that and still make 15 20% risk free mm. right so a hedge fund comes and does those risk free sort of i'll call it non sexy trades which other people are overlooking because they are just looking at some other trend mm. which is really in vogue mm. right so the trend of nasdaq and the tech stocks going up is your road roller they leave tons of pennies lying around and they don't care about it mm. right so there the sophisticated strategies come up much less risk and a very decent return for that amount of risk yeah. um from the little i've understood about the skill of working in the stock market yeah. is that if you follow a certain set of rules and play a very functional game without much creativity right. it's actually a very good game to play in that world it right. will guarantee you some amount of profits and money right. forever what i'm understanding from the world of hedge funds is exactly that that you guys are a bunch of very disciplined professionals who follow a set of rules and probably apply a little bit of creativity once you've mastered the rules correct make more money and then keep kind of compounding on that money yeah i think that's pretty accurate so um you know we just call it like investing frameworks which mm. you're calling discipline right mm. uh, it's exactly that you look at a market for a while you figure out this is the way the market works you build a framework around it and you figure out what is your advantage in that framework right and then you execute that strategy in a very disciplined risk control manner so mm. you're right the creativity part it's not a job where you go in every day and say okay today i'm going to do a and tomorrow i'll do b and uh, third day c it is you figure out much more longer term sort of opportunities to do it the advantage is that in case you are wrong about it 
it's also very liquid like you can get out mm. right so like george soros famously said uh, he's 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 never got married right mm. and he famously said that i've never entered a trade i cannot get out of and marriage seems like that that i i put on a trade and can never get out of it and that's the beauty of trading that you know the risk of uh, the feeling that hey if i do this what happens if i want to get out of it doesn't exist mm. go yeah you could lose some money but you know that before the, you did the analysis right like what is the amount of money you could lose so you go in as a disciplined investor you could come out and uh, re go back into the market with business it's very different yeah what i'm assuming is that that phase of your life gave you an outlook on what's happening in the world and mm-hmm. what markets are coming up am i right yeah so i'll th- i'll say that the number one thing again from it is pattern recognition mm. right so i think so my bet used to always be on the macro side in equity and credit markets and really my skill that i honed there was how do i recognize pattern and trends a little before other people do right so the idea was it's, it's flow on a macro scale it's f- definitely flow on a macro scale right mm. so you are really looking at what are all the players doing in the market right so similarly when i came in and did businesses my number one thing which i i'm definitely very confident about is figuring out that i'm in the right trend and in the right wave that's going to really ride everything right mm. so in in finance they always say trend is your friend and never sort of go against the tide and that is definitely true for 80 to 90% of profits you make in finance mm. if you figure out the right trend see if tech stocks are going up maybe somebody buying google may make more money than somebody buying microsoft but both will make money mm. but if tech stocks are going down you may lose less money by buying google than microsoft but you're still going to lose money so who mm. cares mm. so the trend is really really important in finance as is it in every area of your life yep, right yep. if you pick the right trend it makes life much much simpler yeah 100% so um, around 2 years ago i met a very young uh, college grad who had just started working at wall street and he had those ambitions of making it big at wall street yeah so i asked him a very simple question i asked him that i'm sure because you started working at wall street and you're so passionate about it you know what's up in the financial world and in terms of what are wall street bankers looking at as the next big opportunities mm-hmm. he said dude i have a simple answer weed and gaming these are the two <laughs> domains that wall street is very excited about right so maybe you can explain to the listeners what it even means to say that wall street is excited about these two domains and right. the second question i have for you is break down those two domains a little bit i also feel now in the last year or so there's a third domain that's added which is blockchain right but uh, you can take it from you <laughs> right. what sure. is what is wall street in the first place right. for someone who's hearing these terms for the first time right so wall street is like your original dalal street where mm. all the big banks and financial uh, places sit in uh, new york right uh, us is by far still the largest stock market financial market in the world and wall street is where all these banks are so it is definitely the epicenter of everything happening around the world in the area of finance uh, so yeah i agree weed and gaming are really two big trends in the world why is that the case um see i think if we take a step back and look at uh, a simple maslow's theory right which is i first wanted security then i wanted to fulfill my physiological needs of eating food and so on and then eventually i want to do something competent and then look at self actualization as the world is getting more structured and as we evolve now i'm taking a little bit of history of as sure. we evolve from agriculture revolution to industrial revolution and even india right imagine india during our parents and grandparents generation where all the parents our parents used to worry about is hey you got to find something which feeds the family every day mm. like now we see uh, you know your generation in particular a little less of my generation but a lot in your generation doing a lot of things that they are passionate about mm. right they are very much more confident that they'll make the money because if they follow the passion like you said be in that state of flow the money will follow right without having to worry about the money mm. so why does weed and gaming fit into this you know weed at the end of the day has two b- big uses right one is medicinal the other is obviously a little bit of recreational mm. the recreational aspect is probably a little more controversial the medical aspect has been clear for a really long time mm. right um weed the cbd component of it the cannabidiol uh, uh, part of it has been used in ayurveda you know since ages in india has been used in other medicines as well uh some part of thc is also a pain reliever mm. right mm. so we take a lot of pain relievers there is caffeine in pain relievers there is some part of thc in pain relievers morphine is given as a pain reliever of course because it's rec- recreational it has some psychotropic substances 
there is definitely a potential of abuse right mm. which is why you know maybe there were regulations made uh, earlier i feel like you know india banned it us banned it and the reason they banned it during the time of nixon was because of pharmaceutical companies right mm. so the one major reason of allopathic medicines is to relieve you of pain right because pain is something that no one wants to tolerate mm. and so our life is driven more by pain alleviation than it is driven by finding passion and finding happiness mm. right so if something can relieve pain we you would pay immediate money for it mm-hmm. right um and if pharmaceutical companies thought that cannabis is allowed then what money would they really make mm. right so i think that drove us to ban it india to ban it many countries to ban it and over time as they realize they have looked at the experiments in scandinavia right uh, cases of over abuse there are much less because mm. it's legalized mm. than it is in other areas mm. right mm. and people in my view will always find things to do which give them happiness and you know unfortunately weed smoking alcohol are all areas of synthetic happiness mm. right mm. so of course i could meditate and get in that state of flow and get in the zone or i could have weed or alcohol or smoke a lot uh, etc and get into that zone of meditation right mm. so one of the things i'll borrow from tim ferris is he always says that if you really want to experience the benefits of meditation maybe if it's allowed in your country take some psychotropic substances so that you can actually get to the end result mm. and once you know that okay this is going to be the end result you would be highly motivated to yeah. do meditation to get to that end result yeah. right so weed in in a way is getting you sort of medically um has great usage also re- recreationally gives you the promised land and of course it's controlled and regulated i think it's a going to be a massive massive opportunity mm. right because it's a innate human need mm. similarly gaming right mm. now in gaming obviously gaming like you talked about addiction a lot of people think that hey gaming is just useless activity right it's only done for entertainment etc a lot of benefits like i said you enter a state of flow there is a lot of camaraderie right like i play clash of clans a lot i can tell you like even if i meet someone who's playing clash of clans on the mobile phone right next to me on the airport i'll be like bro what's your town hall he'll be like i'm town hall 11 i'm like i'm town hall 12 <laughs> right i suddenly feel better about myself mm. and you know like how a lot of people say that even though smoking is addictive i did it because it was a camaraderie mm. like i built bonds mm. the same is with alcohol so i'm not saying that smoke or or drink because of camaraderie but gaming actually gives you a lot of those social bonds mm. right so in my clash of clans right i've been part of this clan for 5 years mm. i've never met anyone physically <laughs> but it's one of my most active whatsapp group right mm. so at a point we were the second best clan in india <laughs> as well and so we took it really seriously and so it's a you know a serious endeavor we have a lot of connection with each other even if we have never met uh, in real life that's okay mm. but i know those guys we discuss we joke we share each other's you know low points uh, and obviously the thing that binds us is that clash of clan game mm. so why should it be that the clash of clan bonding why is that less compared to the bonding i might have with someone due to a, either a blood relation or because we went to college together it isn't mm. because it serves the same emotional purpose uh, for me mm. right okay maybe i'm not networking with my clash of clan gang to get a better business opportunity but that's not what it is meant for yeah. and for the reason that the human race is getting more and more isolated as an in individuals are getting more and more lonely correct so activities like gaming activities like recreational drugs correct. or alcohol which correct. is legal yeah. they bring people together correct. they bring a sense of community yep yeah. uh, and that's actually a human need they yeah. say that roti kapda makan food shelter uh, clothing yeah okay plus storytelling is the fourth one yeah and now there's a fifth one in the modern day context correct which is a sense of community yeah absolutely so so see i think first i'll say is that the reason coding became big is coding actually gave an outlet to people who were introverts mm. to actually become sort of the heroes and attain social status right mm. because as we move uh, there you know like i would say personalities like you could see mark zuckerberg his portrayal in social network being an introvert but now being sort of the superstar for everything that he has created or some would argue the evil that he has created whichever side they are you can't argue the impact he has had on everyone's life right similarly i think the next natural evolution is actually blockchain and gaming why because coders or people who are introvert who may not have the right you know social skills or feel a little bit shy to do that in real life or approach people in public in groups etc 
can much more easily and with much less hurdle do that in gaming environments mm. right and also because you're not really putting yourself out in the same format mm. there is an avatar there is a nickname that i have um and i can actually you know portray myself as someone else take a low risk um relationship form those bonds and then maybe i can reveal a lot more about myself as those bonds strengthen up yeah. right whereas in real life you know how i look you know my real name so already the you know barrier of something screwing up is already very high mm. right and that excludes a lot of people from that society mm. which is why generally like the traditional view is that you know gamers are these isolated people in their basement doing sort of stuff well i think that we bring everyone together mm. right we bring the masses together we bring everyone who may feel a little disconnected from the society in other ways onto the gaming platform mm. uh, and the last thing i'll say is the great part about gaming is that it's a world of unlimited interactions mm. right so if you want to just socialize as a 3d avatar and talk great if you want to be a hyper interactive mode like a pubg or fortnite that i'm shooting but we are doing this as part of four mm. right look at the amount of bonding and interaction and uh, coordination it requires you to do that right so a lot of people who used to play pubg and still play battlegrounds india mm. now will say that you know three of us play a lot the fourth guy we always get in because he's part of our clan and our brotherhood mm. right so it's pretty similar mm. the reason i have been playing clash of clans for 9 years is i now actually feel a responsibility as a co-leader of my clan to say that i can't give up right if yeah. someone is saying you know uh, you got to come in and help us in this war or donate this or you know strategize with us i kind of feel obligated to also help my clan mm. so there is that real sentiment simple question for you who's the most powerful person in india which what position is the most powerful position in india what position is the most powerful position in india so yeah i think the the pm is definitely a very powerful position uh, you know we still need to we are a developing uh, nation we still need a lot of policies to be formed uh, definitely powerful uh, i would also say like influences like yourself are in a great place i would have a, a follow up question to you yeah. who do you think is the biggest influencer in the country and i don't mean an influencer like a content creator uh -huh. who's the most influential person in the country in terms of who can set culture or a vibe and we saw it recently uh interesting so are you saying like i definitely think it will be someone from bollywood or cricket cricket um so yeah like uh, you know virat dhoni because these guys are the captains of the teams and they set the tone for the whole team as well correct they are definitely in leadership positions say like in india they always say like abc right like um they you know bollywood cricket astrology yep. or or sort of religious yep. things so obviously bollywood cricket have a lot of mass influence right I, i think cricket is right at the top correct but we're speaking as indians as brown people yeah now you go to the world stage yeah cristiano ronaldo puts a coke bottle on the side and correct. coke stocks drop correct that's power Yep, by like a small yeah lifestyle move. Correct. What does Cristiano Ronaldo do? He has mastered the art of sports. Right. Parallelly understand that the metaverse is becoming a real thing. Right. How will sports translate into the metaverse? Definitely we'll have football as it exists. Maybe people instead of watching it on TV, they'll be able to sit in the stadium or watch it by sitting on the pitch. Yep. Just a theory. Yep. Parallelly, what people don't understand is that football is about 200 years old. Mhm. Mm 200 years ago is not such a long time ago correct which means that there is potential for newer sports to be created correct and this whole uh, competitive gaming thing that's going on yep what's it called uh, esports esports yep and this whole esports thing that's going on it's the first step towards new sports getting formed in the metaverse absolutely so everything you said about gaming yep. you're actually talking about the um, pre version of what's going to happen to sports in the future and sports does the same things that you described uh gaming to be doing sense of community sense of brotherhood first within the team then people supporting a particular club or country correct etc correct um which is what actually got me very interested to podcast with you in the first place right because i feel you're building for the future of gaming right. right for the future of sports right considering what you do you might actually be building the next cricket or football in the world yeah So I think you're absolutely right like the entire idea of esports is exactly that right like if you think about the largest games which are today going to be call of duty where you have a lot of esports or league of legends or dota right um these games are only like a decade old versus mm. like a football which is 200 years old 
but what is going to happen is that culture number of people playing it like why is cricket so big right mm. um like our activity of entertaining ourselves and connecting with the friends whether they were in a locality or otherwise is gully cricket right mm. like we would even if we had a stay over in school at someone's house we would just like in the room set up furniture and even if it's an area of 6 feet we'll say yaar aise karenge one tip one out create some crazy rules so that it becomes interesting mm. right and because we have all played cricket it's very interesting to spectate it it's very interesting to look at the merchandise it also becomes part of your culture right almost a religion cricket is a religion in india for sure and which is why virat and dhoni and all the other indian cricketers are so aspirational and we look up to them as leaders mm. right um which is the same thing with cristiano ronaldo so when the gaming environment will actually spread and become really mass it will be the same thing mm. right like i am talking about clash of clans i do watch clash of clans e sports mm. right why because i want to see what the best are doing i want to learn from them i also get entertained because mm. i already am uh, related to it right mm. so i'm like oh cool oh wow what happened in that end he did this he did that pretty much like you know you require 24 runs in the last over and can the person pull off or not right you're biting your nails it's a nail biting finish etc etc it is pretty same in games as well mm. right and so the metaverse is like you're referring to is almost a place you're going to live digitally right mm. so everything that we are doing in real life you almost think about the metaverse as take real life and remove all boundaries mm. and when i say remove all boundaries uh, imagine that in real life obviously if i run towards a train i will die right but in the metaverse if i want to do that i'll get the thrill of it but there'll be no consequence mm. because there are no physical rules mm. can i suddenly as anshul have a rocket pack come in an instant and fly of course i can mm. right so there are no physical boundaries in the metaverse for me which also means unlimited interactions mm. right like if i want to extend my hand like uh, you know um, like one of the superheroes i can actually do that in the metaverse right nothing physically constraining me mm. uh, and because there are unlimited interactions possible whether that's commerce whether that's gaming whether that's transactions whether that's sports unlimited possibilities open up mm. and because unlimited possibilities open up completely creative field for you to do whatever you want mm. so coming back to your business right. which i feel is strongly being built for the metaverse mm-hmm. uh, and i'm sure that's something that you have in mind right i want to begin the story of your business by talking about the business you did before okay uh, maybe you could quickly run us through the business you did before and how that led you into this Sure. So when I actually moved back to India in 2013, uh, my parents were not really willing to move to UK. Um, so I thought I would definitely want to be with my parents. I came back here. I took a break for a while. So 2013, I actually went back to law school mm. uh, and did my LLB from uh, Campus Law Center in Delhi University. Coming out of law school, I really wanted to look at businesses which were, you know, potentially in the legal grey area. but there was a lot of uh, possibility for them to become legal in india mm. so i started vaping i was very excited about hemp uh, business which i still think you know medical marijuana will get uh, legalized in india and should get legalized in india because of all the potential it has mm. i got into uh, the liquor business and i also started totality which is our current company which actually the first product was mgpl mobile gaming premier league mm. which was a real money gaming platform for mobile casual games. Mm. So we were the first people to actually build a platform in April 2018 and 6 months later obviously there was a frenzy of other players mm. who were still very popular um and you know they took a lot of VC money and really built uh, big businesses which was definitely something we didn't uh, you know see coming at that point of time mm. and that market really grew quite rapidly. So you were doing that hemp business along with this like parallelly Yeah so we started like four businesses at the same time so we How started vaping so we were just putting like teams in place and trying to figure out and you know like when you're passionate about something in flow it's almost like you don't need to sleep right so it's almost like a day can at least you can do the work of at least two people or three people at that time and we were obviously getting a few people to help us out in each of these businesses right so our initial team in totality was only five people in the hemp business was also five people in the vaping business was uh, close to 7 or 8 people uh, the liquor business was actually a much larger setup in which i was uh, a part of that mm. and totality is the one which is your center of focus now totality is the only focus for me right now so i exited all the other businesses unfortunately vaping got banned in india mm. right like at the same time as us banned it 
pretty much like what happened with sort of cannabis uh, mm. and hemp uh, in the 50s when the US banned it India also banned it at the same time what is vaping for someone who doesn't know so vaping is like a lot of people will know it as e-cigarettes so electronic okay. cigarettes Got it. um it is definitely 95% safer mm. in terms of your cancer risk and tar risk uh but also i think the concern of the authorities which some part of it is definitely legitimate is that it actually has a lot of flavors right so you can actually have the hit of um sort of nicotine mm. but with strawberry flavor oh. or lime flavor like a jewel like a jewel yeah mm. so jewel was one of the largest companies in vaping which unfortunately that also i think is probably shut down now oh really yeah i didn't know this yeah yeah i think they are probably shut down now because in the us also it's illegal mm. so only canada europe you know dubai only china a few places which actually kept uh, vaping legal and i'm pretty sure eventually every country will make vaping legal mm. because it is definitely yes is vaping a good thing for you uh, no right but compared to smoking it's 95% better mm. so at least it's a great step to reducing and giving you the same sort of what you need from nicotine without getting those harmful effects right mm. at least 95% lower mm. uh but okay and because okay and i have a question about the hemp business as well uh i'm sure a big part of running that hemp business was also studying the legality of cannabis in mm-hmm. india and considering everything that's happening with the aryan khan case and uh, the narcotics situation in india right uh, i have so many questions about that i'm sure even the listeners have questions because you've worked in a business related to that field i'm sure you have some crazy insights about when it's going to be legalized etc so while i have to ask you a lot about totality i have to dial back one step just before we get into talking right. about nfts and gaming sure. and crypto and all those subjects that you're into right now specifically with hemp i have learned that hemp as a product is different from uh, what people think of as weed yep you know, people use weed to roll joints whatever smoke joints but hemp has multiple uses you can use it to make textiles for clothing correct. you can use it to make bricks i've heard correct uh, you can use it for lots of these things that people don't you know paper i believe correct uh, so there's all these other uses of hemp i think there's a company called indian hemp company or bombay hemp co bombay hemp company bohiko uh yep. ratan tata is invested in bohiko also right so uh, uh you know i the reason i'm asking you this is so that young college listeners young professionals get insights into what opportunities are out there in the 20s and 30s right. in india right uh also i want to ask you that because you worked in that world of hemp which is so close to the world of cannabis where we're seeing this whole aryan khan situation go on we're seeing this whole narcotics bureau situation go on what's the status of legality of it in india because India usually copies what happens in America mm-hmm. over time. If you mm-hmm. historically study India yeah, since nineteen forty-seven, yeah. So if America is gradually legalizing it completely in every state, yep. Recreationally legalizing it in a matter of twenty years, probably India is going to legalize weed. Right. Twenty thirty years. I right. don't think it's longer than that. Yeah. Uh, but currently, what's the situation? What does the current government think of uh, weed legalization? What does the government think of recreational marijuana? Right. What's happening? Cool. So I think the one major difference between hemp and marijuana to start is so you can consider hemp or marijuana as three components, right? Mm-hmm. So there is actually the plant itself, which can be used for multiple things, and within the plant there are two main chemicals. One is CBD, so cannabidiol, and the other is THC. THC is your psychotropic substance, mm. which actually gives you the high, which uh, you know unfortunately sometimes is over abused or is really the reason why a lot of governments banned mm. marijuana in the first place. Mm. So hemp, industrial hemp in India has been legalized for a while, where the THC has to be less than 0.5 percent. Mm. So when we were looking at the hemp business, you could already grow THC with that rule in Uttarakhand as well as in Jharkhand. As in, it's the same species of plant. It's, a, it's different a different species. It's okay. there is one called cannabis indica and okay. there's another called cannabis sativa. God. But the really the idea was that you have to have THC below. 0.5 percent. Mm. So really, the idea of hemp was that you can use it, the CBD component, which has a lot of medical values, mm. right? So people have actually gotten a lot of pain relief from it. Mm. It is supposed to be, you know, good for even if you are a cancer patient. Mm. Uh, if you have some sort of, uh, you know, chronic pain, it alleviates that. Uh, people actually use it as eye drops for yourself and your pets. People use it in your, you know, soaps and your shampoos because of all the med- medical benefits. and the actual uh, bulk from the plant like you said you can make hemp crete which are the bricks you can actually make hemp fiber 
so france is actually really big on hemp fashion mm. right and the biggest exporter of hemp um, at least at the time when we were looking at this business was china mm. and china was controlling that market and we really felt that in india we have a lot of the states where we can grow this hemp and really take that market share away from china mm. and right? it's a cash crop oh it's a, an absolute cash crop requires much less water to grow and the reason it's a weed is it's actually uh, jungly mm. right it, it grows if the environment is right it just grows itself so you don't really have to sustain it unlike you know the other crops we are uh, doing in agriculture right for example rice um, requires so much water mm. that exporting rice is actually exporting wa- water outside of india mm. right whereas these are very sustainable so i think the movement has been a lot towards bamboo mm. as the first thing because it's a lot more sustainable and the movement will be towards hemp because as a fiber it will be a lot more sustainable for all products right mm. a lot of your wood g- will get replaced by hemp your shirts your mm. shoes mm. Uh, your paper hemp creates much stronger than bricks much more sustainable biodegradable etc right and which much is, more cleaner for the environment which is why ratan tata has invested in bohico which is why ratan tata has invested in bohico mm. so bohico has definitely been one of the pioneers doing it and we also had a partnership with bohico when we started this business to distribute their products in northern india Correct. right so we were really trying to uh, you know go for it the thc component is probably the most um, you know the component where everyone disagrees right mm. so some part of thc also helps in pain alleviation because obviously you know you have to give a little bit of morphine or thc or caffeine for people to feel alleviated of the pain but because of its over abuse potential obviously governments have to regulate it or control it right mm. um there have been like when we were studying this we were we are quite confident that at least medical marijuana would be made legal in india mm. right given the value that india historically has seen in ayurveda uh, given that medical marijuana is now legal in a lot of states in the us we at least were very comfortable that medical marijuana at least will get legalized in india i think the position on recreational part is a little bit more unclear mm. according to us mm. and we weren't building a business for the recreational part mm. our idea was really to focus on the industrial hemp and then when the opportunity of medical marijuana comes up also expand into that mm. right so medical cannabis medical hemp where again the focus would be primarily on the cbd component it could have varying degrees of thc based on the disease or the pain that you are trying to mm. cure also we have a bhang culture in the country and there's so many legal bhang shops in mp and rajasthan absolutely where it's is government can, licensed yeah absolutely because it's under the excise department mm. so so bhang is actually the seed of the hemp plant right what people end up smoking like whatever the part was in arjun khan i do not know exactly what drug or what number of drugs have been quoted there from i have only read the newspaper reports but they're really talking about the flower and the leaves uh, mm. of that plant right mm. particularly the flower the crystals on the flower has the highest thc component mm. right so also that has a thc a right so even as a chemical compound uh, thc a converts it carboxylizes and converts to thc which gives you the mm. psychotropic or the high mm. that people who mm. use it for that actually that's why they smoke it up or the bake it etc mm. etc but we shouldn't like because some people abuse it we shouldn't let that uh, set the policy for the other people who can get a lot of medical benefits from it yeah. right of course it requires regulation to make sure that there is not a lot of over abuse or drug addiction coming from it it does have that potential but so does sugar right mm. so, lot of people are addicted yeah. to sugar and obesity and diabetes yeah. is rampant in the country that's that's one thing i believe that our parents generation for some reason i think it's the schooling or the culture they grew up in they're not able to wrap their head around this concept that right. alcohol and sugar are way worse yes exactly like but just because it's a part of society maybe it's because of a lack of the internet and lack of perspective that the world they grew up in have you seen shawshank redemption yes of course you know they talk about institutionalization yeah. in it uh, yeah. brooks was his name right? the guy who got institutionalized Correct. everyone's seen shawshank redemption so i don't Correct. need to talk about it yeah. much but basically if you live in a society or a culture long enough you start believing that that is the way it is and and any other way is not uh, correct absolutely um you know i read this quote once that said that most people perceive culture as something that's been there forever yep. but if you actually study culture from a truly historical perspective like if you go back 100 years 200 years 1000 years you'll see even cultures evolved so much right so if you think that uh, because when you were growing up 
weed was given like a really bad name or you're seeing aryan khan in the news uh, you know getting a bad rep because yep. of whatever you know holding yep. some hash or weed it's not a representation of the future exactly the future might change up completely correct and uh, scientifically speaking the whole world is waking up to the fact that um, you know weed is less harmful than alcohol even from a recreational perspective i don't do either I've, i mean i've done it in the past for sure right. i'm like a complete teetotaler now right and i'm not recommending it to anyone yeah but i'm trying to highlight how the future is going to change which is why we spoke about wall street waking up to the potential of weed correct someone once upon a time maybe 100 years ago thought that hmm alcohol is becoming big in the world yeah oriental cultures asian countries are accepting alcohol now let's make an alcohol business let's make a vodka let's package it in a red color label let's call it smirnoff and they made a multi million dollar business yep and we take smirnoff for granted because teenagers can go up and buy a smirnoff bottle of vodka from a alcohol ka shop correct but this is probably going to happen in 20 years with respect to weed there's going to be brands that sell a particular kind of strain you already see this in holland you see this in america obviously you see this in canada as well yeah yeah and uh, i think with bohico and i'm sure you know with even your business when you were doing it that was the eventual sort of outlook maybe 20 years down the line right that at some point recreational weed will be legalized and there is a business opportunity here and it actually makes the world sort of a better place because you can control the people who have addictive personalities from getting addicted to a substance in the same way that you know i feel like if um i think it was portugal right which had it had legalized heroin i believe and it had legalized hard drugs and they oh, saw really? the, okay. there was some european country i can't remember which one spain or portugal one of them uh where they legalized hard drugs and they saw that drug abuse actually went down got it yeah i think that makes sense so you know one of the interesting things is maybe i i hope people know this that in the 1900s like in the last century itself uh alcohol was banned in the us mm. for a long time mm. which was the prohibition area where al capone who is a very well known gangster actually built his entire business mm. because he was actually bootlegging alcohol so like what we call desi thara where people are just making alcohol illegally that became a really big business in the us mm. and a lot of genesis of cocktails actually came because uh, alcohol was banned so people were mixing it with other mixers so that people do not know uh, that they are actually drinking alcohol mm. right so you know if you think about it Uh, imagining now given the us culture and the western society imagining that just less than 100 years ago alcohol was banned there sounds really difficult right i i'll say the same thing but what i'll just emphasize is that look whether we get to recreational part of it or not in terms of weed the medical part and the other uses are also so much more that i would almost first want the government to focus on to say the government has already legalized industrial hemp which is a great first step we should definitely legalize medical uh, marijuana for use for people who really need it and then maybe have a debate about the recreational part right i totally agree with you like if it was only up to me i think recreational marijuana is a value add in in total has to get regulated but that regulation is actually going to reduce drug abuse according to yeah. me as well the government's also going to make more money through taxing that uh, yeah, absolutely. like the government is going to earn a lot of money if they actually uh, correct legalize recreational marijuana or medical marijuana correct and i also feel india will earn a lot of money in exports yeah uh, because of our history of growing hash and weed right. and all these things um so there is a lot of business opportunity for the government there. uh we'll be able to actually prevent people from getting addicted to the substances also correct uh i also want to ask you that where is the government right now in this whole legalization zone are they actually thinking of legalizing medical marijuana even now as of 2021 um see my analysis um 3 years ago when we were into this business was that there is a very high probability that we'll see legalization of it um you know government policies are obviously something that they take time in but i won't really know today what their stance is because mm. we are out of the business don't really focus as much on it from the policy perspective as we used to mm. when we were in it what do you make of this whole aryan khan situation like i mean because i think uh, the government has made a statement mm -hmm. about anti drug use and i get it they're trying to say don't get into drug abuse correct or to the audience i mean to the uh, citizens of the country right. trying to make an example of this whole situation right but what does it say about the attitude towards even medical cannabis 
uh so so it's a little bit tough um i don't i obviously do not know the details of exactly what has happened it is very clear that from a law perspective consumption of these psychotropic substances is banned so if that did happen then it is clearly illegal um how harsh should the punishment be for something which is potentially in an area of change uh, my personal view would be that i think this has been really taken out of proportion because he is obviously the son of a, one of the best known bollywood stars in the country right yeah. so like the first time when i heard it and obviously now it has become sort of a household debate right mm-hmm. like my mom is really talking about it and she will also come and ask me like i hope you don't do any <laughs> of this stuff which never happened right because now suddenly it's front and center right like who takes hash who takes weed and this debate has started so if there is any silver lining to it to the unfortunate events at least for aryan khan again i have no judgment on whether he is guilty or not the courts will decide it uh, but the one silver lining out of it is that that debate has started right mm. so my point to someone like in my friends or even to my parents would be look if he was doing it only for his own purpose is there a chance that the government should look at some personal consumption within limits uh, the same way like we're talking about recreational marijuana or medical marijuana should that be made legal i personally feel i'll be for it mm. right um, of course control over abuse but if you are doing it recreationally in your private space not really harming anybody then you know i i at least would make an argument and i hope the government looks at it and makes it legal mm. right uh, in that manner um i also feel like you know this binariness that we have in india because only black or only white only black or only white like oh like some people were like bro it's chill sab karte hain usne bhi kar liya kya ho gaya wo itne bade baap ka beta hai so he'll do, he'll do something again i do not know the reality of it and some will say oh how bad right mm. like this is what happens when you have rich parents and <laughs> now it has actually become a debate about upbringing mm. rather than the actual issue itself which i think is unfortunate right what people should really understand is we a we do not know the facts right b even if the facts are as they are, are presented by the media itself haven't we really blown it out of proportion uh, with what has been done he is still a you know youth 23 years old if i if i'm right um i i do feel like it was a little bit blown out of proportion yeah. for what seems like the prima facie facts right? for trps and views also yeah absolutely I mean, you know a lot of people blame uh, the government and say that oh you covered up other issues by promoting this what they fail to understand is on the inside of the media industry all media houses work towards views numbers and trps correct and they know that india loves gossip they know that india loves bollywood oh this is bollywood gossip this is very hot controversial bollywood gossip right. put it out even more right now the media is doing it for their own trps and views correct but uh, half the population is blaming now the government saying oh you guys you guys have blown out promotion huh. there's gray in like every matter here right i think most of the audience has heard of the word nfts but they'd like a slightly deeper explanation of it So you can begin by explaining NFTs, and then you can go into the world of blockchain and all the opportunities that it holds. Sure. Um, so NFTs are you know non fungible tokens. Mm. Uh, they are essentially the best way to understand them is that they are a technology wrapper mm. to put anything digital inside it, mm. right? So you can put art inside it, you can put music inside it, you can put uh, AI code inside it, you can put whatever you want inside it, you can put cryptocurrencies inside it. and i would say that the easiest way to understand them is not as digital art mm. but as digital real estate mm. right so like you have actual land and you know in the regulations you can build whatever you want on the land you can build a house you can build a farmhouse you can build agriculture you can build industries you can build malls offices so on and so forth pretty much the same with digital real estate but now that we are in the digital world no physical boundaries you can do whatever you want with it mm. so if cryptocurrencies which are which is something people are most aware of bitcoin ethereum uh, are the just the currency of transaction nfts will actually become the digital real estate and your digital identity and your digital properties is probably going to be a 100x market of what cryptocurrencies are right so like last quarter 10.7 billion of nfts got traded mm. today gaming is a 170 billion dollar market uh decentralized finance which is blockchain finance the assets are around 150 billion so already i would say nft is a 350 billion dollar market mm. which is probably going to cross a trillion within 2 years mm. right mm. so it's a massive massive opportunity 
like this Diwali actually instead of giving the normal Diwali hampers etc to our team members we gave crypto mm. and one major reason was for people who haven't started their journey of investing in this web3 space i hope to kick start it and for people who are already started it i hope to strengthen it mm. because i think in at least our lifetime this will be by far the best wealth creation opportunity ever mm. right it's almost like everything that has been happened till now right with web2 internet etc is now restarting mm. right and so imagine that zuckerberg with facebook had a great advantage because how could i recreate a facebook right a daunting task but now zuckerberg and i start at the same level mm. so now i have that potential also to become the trillion dollar 2 trillion dollar company in the web3 space mm. and not just i because it's decentralized all of the viewers of this uh, podcast also have that same opportunity mm. so there is the best opportunity ever to create and make wealth for yourself and create great ecosystems in the world wow so we spoke about your journey weed gaming and there is this whole other second chapter to your life where you went into the world of what people know as web3 yep the metaverse crypto nfts right which are the hot topics nowadays but i feel it was very crucial for people to listen to this side of the conversation before we head into part 2 uh part 2 will cover what you're doing now this was part 1 uh i want to sign off by saying please share this with your friends look out for part 2 you're not going to get this kind of education in college you're only going to get this education when you talk to people who are actually playing on the sports ground right now and by sports ground i mean web3 Right. building the metaverse <laughs> the world of business the world of finance and that's what i always hope this podcast brings to you guys so share it as much as possible and for highlights go check out the ranveer show clips thank you anshul thank you ranveer we'll head into part 2 sure so that is where we decided to pause the conversation because everything anshul spoke about in this episode were heavy to absorb in the first place but everything he spoke about in the next episode got even heavier even more blockchain oriented he described nfts the metaverse in detail if you like this episode the next episode is a must watch and if for some reason you saw part 2 first and you're returning to part 1 then hey you missed out on another great conversation here we're definitely going to be bringing anshul back on the show mainly because i want to keep learning from him people like this are my own secondary education in life you've got to be aware of how the world is changing you've got to be aware of all the opportunities out there and you know with our community this TRS community that we've built out I personally look at this as sort of a season 2 of the podcast where we're not just talking about self improvement we're talking about current affairs we're talking about opportunities that are available for young professionals and this was one of our early episodes that contains the new flavor of the show so keep up with the runway show tell your friends about it things have changed on this show make sure you follow us on Spotify Every episode is available on Spotify. Forty-eight hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. Heavy episodes coming your way. Watch out for part two with Anshul Rustaki. Mm-hmm.